Hi there! In this video we are going to show you how to play Porto, a game where each player is building colored houses in a Portuguese region on Porto named Ribeirinha. It can be played by 1 to 4 players in about 50 minutes by players with at least 8 years old. We will show you how to set up the game, including what is different depending on the player count. First, the game board is placed within all players' reach, and the floor tiles are sorted by color and placed in piles next to the board. Regular floors are separated from the ground floors, which can be identified with the illustration of a door. The number of houses that can be built during the game depends on the number of players. This is indicated on the board, both for the number of roofs available and ground floor bonuses. The roofs are displayed on the reserved spaces until reaching the indication for the desired number of players. Then, three roof tiles are placed in the last roof space. As for the ground floor bonuses, the pieces are shuffled and placed randomly face up on the reserved spaces, also having in consideration the indication for the desired number of players. For example, in a two-player game, the spaces reserved for roof tiles when playing with three or four players remain empty, as well as those house spaces, which can only be built when playing with three or four players. There are three types of cards, shuffle individually to form three different decks. Construction cards, identified by the blue background, public contract cards, identified by the white background, and private contract cards, identified by the illustration and the endgame symbol. The deck of construction cards is placed on the bottom of the board face down, leaving a space on the right to form a discard pile. In addition, five cards are randomly drawn from the deck and placed face up in the reserved spaces on the bottom of the board. The deck of public contract cards is placed on the center of the board face down. In addition, four cards are randomly drawn from the deck and placed face up in the reserved spaces on the top of the board. The deck of private contract cards won't be available during the course of the game. However, each player receives five of them before the first round, from which two are discarded and the other three are kept in secret from the opponents. Those are individual player goals, which can grant you additional points by the end of the game. If you want to reduce the complexity of the game, you can decide not to play with the private contract cards. In the last aspect of the setup, each player chooses a color from those available, receiving a reference card and a victory point counter on the same color, which is placed on the board next to the number 1. The first player marker is awarded to one of the players at their choice, not going around the table during the course of the game. And this is how the setup for two players looks like. On each turn, players are able to draw cards, build houses and fulfill public contracts until the roof above the player count indication is built. Then, the game end is triggered and one more round is played before the final scoring. In the meantime, three houses can yet be built. When playing, each player can choose between two possible actions. Draw cards to their hand or use cards to build on a house, also having the possibility to fulfill public contracts. Remember that you can only draw cards or build on your turn. Performing both actions on the same turn is not allowed. All construction cards are represented by a number and a background color matching an existing color on the floor tiles. You need cards at hand in order to build on future turns. You can draw one, two or three cards to your hand in any combination as long as they don't exceed the total limit of 3 if you sum their values. For example, drawing 3 cards with a value 1 is valid, as well as drawing a value 2 card and a value 1 card. You can also draw just one card with a value 1, 2 or 3. 
there is no limit for the number of cards at hand. After drawing the desired number of cards, the empty spaces are filled with cards from the draw pile. If there are no cards to draw, the previously discarded ones are shuffled, forming the new deck to draw from. The other action you can take instead of drawing cards is playing cards to perform the building action. You can only perform this action if you have at least two cards at hand to play. One card indicates the number of tiles to build and the other card indicates the color. For example, if you play a value 1 blue card and a value 2 red card, you can choose to either build exactly one red floor or two blue floors. There are some important aspects to consider when building on the houses. In order to start building a house, the first thing to build is a ground floor. Ground floors with a door can only be placed on the base spaces as long as they are empty. You can never place a ground floor on top of another or next to a house with the same color. For example, if you choose to build a red floor, you can place it here. However, you could not place it here because there is already a red house next to this space. When placing a ground floor, you score immediately as many points as indicated in the bonus piece on that space. Then, you place it on any empty roof space of your choice. If all the roof spaces are occupied, the piece is removed from the game. Once a ground floor is built, you can build regular floors above it, as long as they share the same color. You build as indicated on the cards you played, considering you have to place all the tiles on the same house. In addition, you have to be able to build the exact amount of tiles you indicated, not more, not less. You should note that you cannot build a floor on top of another or leave any empty space below. After building the desired number of floors on a house, you immediately perform a scoring action. You score one victory point for each floor tile on that house, including the ones you just placed and the ground floor. You also score one victory point for each adjacent floor tile adjacent to the ones you placed, including the ground floors if that is the case. For example, if you choose to build two blue floors, you have to build both floors on the same blue house. You cannot build one floor on two different blue houses or ignore one floor and just build the other. With this building action, you would score one point for each of these floors on the house and one additional victory point for each floor adjacent as well. As soon as the last floor on a house is built, a rooftop is placed on the corresponding empty space. You can never place it on top of another, neither if there is any empty space below. You should note that roofs never count as floors or as adjacent tiles when scoring. When placing a roof, if there is any bonus piece on that space, you score immediately as many points as indicated. Then, the bonus piece is removed from the game. When performing the building action, a player has the opportunity to fulfill public contract. Multiple contracts can be completed on the same turn, as long as the exact needs are met, not more, not less. For example, if a contract indicates using two green cards, and another indicates the completion of a green house, completing a green house using two green cards are the exact parameters to fulfill both public contracts. Once completed, you score immediately the amount of points indicated on the cards and place them on a pile face down next to you. You should note that private contracts on your hand only score on the end of the game. Even though you complete them, you should not announce it or score points on that moment. As soon as the roof above the player count indication is built, the game end is triggered and only one more round is played before the final scoring where the last three houses can yet be built. When all the players take the same amount of rounds, they score the three private contact cards at hand. If they score 50 points, they just take the 50 point marker and continue counting through the track. And that is all you need to know to be able to play Porto.
on the rule book, you can also find tiebreakers, the explanation of each public and private contract, and detailed information on the solo mode. For more information on this game, you can always go to BoardGameGeek or the official channels of the game publisher. The links are on the description below, as well as the overview details. If any rule wasn't clear, or is there anything you want to tell us regarding this video, let us know in the comments. Until then, stay connected and be safe! See you soon!